Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, I want to spend some time in this session to talk about the hybrid workplace. And in particular, I want to spend some time thinking about what that means in this new world that we're going into. Everybody remembers the scramble as we all fled to our homes and tried to set up our homes effectively to work properly. That was a very tactical activity. We're now in a much more strategic phase of, of this whole adventure where we're starting to think about how the hybrid work environment actually operates. And that's a combination of the remote and the in-office experiences. So to help us understand that, the first guest I've, uh, I've got on with us today is Craig Dewar from Wayne House Research. And he's gonna give us some industry insights. Greg, thank you so much for joining us. I first question for you: What does this what does this new hybrid workplace look like, and and is it defined at this point? It's a great question, and frankly, the one thing we're finding talking to companies is there's no single playbook that's working across the board. And what, what do I mean by that? For hybrid work, we're seeing companies talk to their employees about coming in on time based models, come in two or three days a week in the office. We're seeing some that are trying to do shift based ideas. Marketing comes in on Monday, sales comes in on Tuesday, and so forth. There's even interesting ones that also impact the, the culture. Um, Cisco, yourself, you guys have a no meeting Wednesday culture, which means no matter where you are, home or in the office, you probably won't be uh, in that virtual environment of meetings. So the frank answer is there's no single playbook across the space, but there is something that is common. We talked to line of business leaders, the people managing these teams, and they're sharing with us, it's not about just getting people in the seats in the office. It's about an imbalance between focus time and collaboration time. It's about helping them uh, figure out work and life balance, uh, how to make sure they're productive and can move seamlessly between all these locations. So, Craig, thank you. And, and, and we've, we've both been in this market for many years. Uh, you know, one of the things I'd love to get your perspective on is how is this shift in the marketplace driving the requirements that we need to support? Uh, it's, a, it's a great intro into this idea. There's two things that as vendors, as technologists, as industry, we need to bring forward. And that's really embracing the idea of flexibility and equity. So flexibility, we probably know about. We've talked about this from everything from investment protection uh, to what you can do in the room space. But it goes to the idea that the platform in itself needs to work for people as these things change dynamically. Am I working at home? Am I working from the office and what have you? But probably the one that's really interesting to explore is the idea of equity. So what do I mean by that? There's a great illustration that, that shares this in a, in a really simple format. I love it. It's an image of a baseball game taking place. And there's three children standing behind a fence trying to peer over and see what's happening in that game. Well, the first thing it puts up is an equal solution, equality. And what they, mean, they do here is this. They give three boxes to those children, and each child is standing on the box. But the problem is you have one tall child, you have one short child, and so they're not able to equally see the game. So equality does not necessarily solve the situation. Now, an equitable solution is the idea that we customize which each person needs in that situation. So that short child has a tall box and that tall child may have a tall box, but they're all equally able to see that. So equity becomes important. And why now? Because in this hybrid world, this is where it's changing. This is where our, our age is showing, Tom. We're used to where meetings used to be remote participants peering into a meeting room, right? And in that meeting room, that's where the environment took place. But now it's not about the virtual participants. Meeting in itself has become virtualized. And now you've got individuals and rooms trying to peer into this virtual environment. How do you make them equitable? How do you make that one head, one box person and those three or four people in the room each have equal access to video, to audio, to the content even? How can they be heard the same? How can they see the same? That's where equity becomes really important. Super insights. I, I, I really love the analogy. As I said, the only thing I would change is cricket rather than baseball, but it's such a nice analogy. Um, so, so given that, when we start thinking now about the, the things that are changing and the things that are here to stay and the requirements on our technology, what are those and what do you see that we need to be able to address going, going forward? Well, here's one way I like to think about it. It's a framework that I, we created and it, it's very simple. It's called the three W's. It allows us to look at both pre-COVID and post-COVID and some of this change. And the three W's stand for workforce, workplace, and workflow. Who's meeting, where are they meeting, and how are they getting work done? And I think that's important to think about that. And we can apply what's changed in those spaces with the hybrid work model going forward. Well, let's start with workforce, right? So in the past, I might've talked about generational differences and how we meet uh, based upon wh when we were born. Now we have this idea that people participating in the meeting can be from anywhere. Now, as a technology company, we've already known these ideas of like 
we might have programmers located in another country. But for 80% of those companies out there that are new to video, this concept's new. I can have someone work for me that's not located in the same location as my office building, and they can contribute productively. So it's important that the technology addresses this for these people. Uh, workspaces. Now, this is a great one. Uh, in the past, you could think of what's taking place in the offices serving functional purposes. The four that I like to focus on is uh, concentration, collaboration, socialization, and learning. You can think about what each one applies there. Well, in that pre-COVID environment, you might have an office, a typical office, have a high level of concentration environments. These are private desks, right? This is where Tom goes in and he has a desk and he sits there and works. And maybe some collaboration space, less in socialization. What's taking place post-COVID is that we're changing these like levers, right? Things that we have here is that we might be less concentration of private desks, but maybe more shared desks, right? You might increase socialization. That might be how your company is driving cultural connection to that as well, too. And that's important. The last one's workflows. Now, we could talk about the equity aspect, but the one I would really love to see solved by the industry for our clients is the idea that I can seamlessly start work in one location and move it to any location that I'm working. And, and that changed now in this hybrid work. It's not just from home to work, but as we mentioned, in the office, I might be moving in three or four different locations. Or these days, it's, it's virtualized. I might be starting a meeting or work in one platform and moving to another meeting platform. How can I move my work around seamlessly and easily? Those are those great challenges that I think we're, we're more than capable of solving. Great, fascinating insights. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today. Thank you. Christian, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, first question for you, our uh, Chief People Officer, Fran Katsudis, made a, a comment that the hybrid work experiment is, is about to begin. What have you learned so far as you've been working on this in Cisco? And what are some of the key takeaways that you can you can share with us? Yeah, thanks, Tom. Uh, it's a great question. I, so the first thing I'd say is that it's great that Fran has consistently referred to it as an experiment because we're all living the experiment in real time. Uh, I think it's really important to remember this is not actually new. Uh, we in Cisco have been working in hybrid and working remotely and working in a distributed fashion for quite some time. Uh, actually, pre-COVID, 20% of our staff were considered remote employees. We typically saw at any given day, 40% of our employees weren't necessarily on site, so we're used to that. And at the team level, 95 plus percent of our teams are distributed teams across multiple locations. So this is actually quite uh, not new to us. It's quite urgent out in the marketplace to try to identify how to make it work in each company. But in Cisco, this is something that we're actually quite familiar with. So, Christian, when we think about the hybrid work experiment, what are some of the key considerations that you've identified for Cisco? And how do those map to some of the organizations that I know you were talking to? It's a great question. I think what we have to remember is that this is not going to be something that we can just assume as a small contributor to the next generation of work. This is how people are going to work. This is how talented staff and this is are going to expect. And this is all we're going to win the, the talent battle in the space. We have to provide a lot of employee choice. We have to lead with a people discussion about this. And our technology is the platform that honestly is what makes it so easy for us. And for some other folks that are out in the marketplace, this is what is a bit of a challenge is that technology platform makes the idea of being able to connect from anywhere so critically important. And we often may take that for granted in Cisco, but the big lesson in this is the companies that are struggling most with defining hybrid work, worried about how it's going to affect talent and how it's going to affect their brand, have a lot of technology concerns that they're not sure necessarily if this is going to be a natural way for many of their companies and their staff and their teams to work. So when you think of their staff and the teams, what, what are some of the, the key personas uh, that you've identified that we need to make sure we support? Because I think that 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 has changed and evolved, I think, through through the last few months. Agree. And I, and I think that is be beyond essential. Um, whatever goes past essential, something in the, the realm of critical, we cannot take a monolithic approach towards this. Uh, we have to recognize the same way we want employees and talent to have choice. We also need to recognize these are different people with different personalities, with different preferences, in different cultures, in different situations. Uh, we need to pay attention to a few folks very specifically. How do you make someone that is early in Cisco become part of the culture? How do we really embrace that persona of early in Cisco? Not just early in career, but early to the company. There's a lot to learn here. There's a lot to understand here. There's a lot to, to sort of make yourself not just acquainted, but truly immersed in our culture. 
also need to think through domestic situations. Not everybody has infrastructure that's perfectly suited to work from home. Not everybody lives in a situation that's perfect to work from home. And of course, from country to country, location to location, metro to metro, they're all different considerations we have to take. So we really have to be careful not to take a monolithic approach, take a very, very varied approach and allow local leaders as well as country leaders and even team leaders to understand what's going to work best for their team. That's so, so insightful. And I, I think, you know, one, one of the things that we've talked about before is, is I, I think that for many companies, remote work is a new thing for us. I think, as you said, it's not. Um, what are some of the things you can share about for those remote workers, firstly, uh, in terms of the challenges and some of the opportunities that we need to and can start to, to, to support with those remote workers? Yeah, I, so if we think about the, the, the grand experiment as it's going on right now, for places that have been in prolonged lockdown or in prolonged work from home as a mandatory situation for safety purposes, there's issues of boundaries, right? When does the workday start and end and your availability? Is it never ending? You know, how much time do you spend with your family versus sitting in front of a video screen, et cetera? Great that accessibility is so easy, difficult to draw boundaries. And we do ha have to start to think about how we not just help with boundaries, but looking at safety, looking at security. Wh what are some of the unknowns in this space, Tom, around what are going to be the limits of our, if you will, our duty of care for our employees? And we haven't answered all these questions yet. Those are some of the big unknowns. What are our obligations from just a life safety issue? What do we do with people that live in buildings that may or may not have the best fire protection systems, the best alarm systems? What do we do about in the US OSHA standards in terms of safe workplaces, same seat, safe seating environments, et cetera? All things we have to think about and, and really pay attention to going forward. But at the end of the day, this really is about making sure that we're giving people the ability to work from anywhere, but we're not forcing it upon individuals that there is one policy driven or one standard approach. Uh, we are unlikely to implement something I would call hard policy on this outside of the places where we have a legal obligation to do so. And those are more around payroll and tax and local legalities and local municipal guidelines. So, so again, it's so fascinating to me because I think, you know, we just talked about, you know, the, the remote working community, the home working community, et cetera, and, and that community may also be all leveraging the built environment, you know, the office spaces. Let's turn our lens to that. What are your thoughts around how that's evolving and, and how that needs to reflect what's happening in the in the remote working environment? Yes. Yeah, so let's start with the most important question in all of this and that's so what is the built environment for that that is the question and is not a rhetorical question uh not just we at cisco but also every one of our customers we should be asking our customers to define what it means to them in the built environment what is it for why do we need it why are we asking people to come to a place in my view and the more i talk with people out in the marketplace there's there's a few things that that we have to both recognize at a foundational level, but aspirations that we should set. The first is we need an ecosystem of technology that works. Now, I, I personally already take for granted with only three years behind me in Cisco, I take for granted the level of infrastructure we have. We have to get the ecosystem so that it doesn't just work well, but it works across the board, no matter where you are in an inclusive manner, it's intuitive and it is not a barrier to entry to that setting. Once you get the built environment right with that technology ecosystem, that allows you to enable whatever the use plan you have is for that space. And I believe in Cisco, it is about events, it is about bringing teams together, it is about collaboration. It is not to go to a physical built environment to do your work by yourself. Now, back to the monolithic issue, it will vary from employee to employee, but the primary purpose of our real estate going forward is going to be the idea of great settings that allow for great events, where the technology ecosystem is 100% dependable and people can come together to become part of the Cisco culture and the Cisco teams and have variety and choice in what they do. And that's how we're starting to build more and more of our real estate as we're opening buildings in Chicago, eventually in New York City, the restart of, of our sites in Prague, et cetera. We've seen this across the board, brand new headquarters in Singapore. It is about events, it is about collaboration and it is less about individual work.
And Christian, that resonates so much with me. I've been remote working for more than a decade now within Cisco. And, and I think that the messages that you're providing are, are, are absolutely spot on from my perspective. Thank you so much for, for sharing your insights with us today. My pleasure, Tom. Thanks. So Craig's given us some great market insights and industry insights. Um, and Christian's given us, I, I hope, some, some good insights as to what we're doing and how we're going through this uh, hybrid work experiment within Cisco. What I'd like to do is talk now about some of the technology developments that we're investing in to be able to support the environments that we've talked about so far. And so when we think about the technology investments, there are four key parts to it that we kind of are, are building on. And I think the, the, the four key goals are one, make remote work sustainable. One thing I think we all realize is that remote work is here to stay. And it's rather than being a option or a possible choice for some people that we need to just connect to loosely, it's really becoming part of the workplace in a, in a much more integrated way. Secondly, the office spaces themselves, the built environment, the purposes are evolving and changing. And they need to integrate well both inside the office, but also integrate really well with the remote office workers. Thirdly, we need to think about how people are moving between these spaces and how we support them to use these spaces without stress, without cognitive overload, easily and seamlessly. And the last thing we need to do, and Christian talked about this right at the end of his piece, was thinking about how to support our users, make sure they're engaged, make sure they're well and happy and comfortable. So what are the building blocks here? Well, the first thing I want to talk about is the office space itself and how the office space has evolved. 87% of executives expect to make changes to their office spaces to accommodate this hybrid working environment. And when we think about that, they think about not just the built office space, but actually the home as part of the office space. And we need technology that spans those. We have a portfolio we've designed that spans all of those spaces from the smallest and most limited desk spaces in homes with challenging environments through to the largest office spaces and everything in between and thinking about the purposes of those spaces as well. Secondly, when we think about the operating system that these devices have to support, it needs to be built on an open and extensible platform. Craig made this really clear, flexibility is key. So let's talk about the aspects of flexibility. The first thing is, let's talk about meetings. Meetings are gonna be virtual now. Pre-COVID, 14% of meetings were being held with remote participants. As we look to places where people are returning to the office, 98% of meetings have remote participants. It's an entirely different world now. So when we think about what we need to support there, we're going to need to support those, those virtual meetings, those conferencing meetings very effectively. And we need to think about doing that on any platform and making it seamless and easy for the users to get into their meetings and carry on their, uh, their, their activities and their collaboration effectively. So that's part one to flexibility. Part two to flexibility is that the platform itself needs to be extensible and it needs to be something that the users can design and cater to their needs. And in particular, this means allowing them to bring the applications and the content that they use uh, into their meetings environment, into their collaboration environment, and have a UI that's familiar and easy for them. So that's part two of the, uh, of the activity. And then the last piece Christian touched on, which is we need to support these users. We need to gauge their well-being in a different way than before. Previously, everyone's in the office. We could look at what was going on and get a sense of how happy people were and get a sense of how comfortable they were to be working in our buildings. That's totally different today. We need to be proactive. We need to engage people. We need to give them guidance. And so to do that, we need real-time insights into what's happening in the workspaces. That's both from a people perspective, how crowded a space is, what's available, can I grab it, can I book it, but also what's happening in my home spaces. Is it comfortable? The temperature right? Is the air quality reasonable? This is guidance that's fundamental to our user community. And being able to do that on a platform is key. That is, just to give you some examples, that is kind of exemplified by things like people, people count. Think about where people are, what rooms are not being occupied, what rooms are not being booked, and give that data in real time so people can really understand where they can go safely to get their work done in a building where they may not have booked space. Environmental sensors are there to be able to provide guidance on what the air quality is like. Is the temperature good? Is the humidity too high? And last but not least, uh, touch-free is key, enabling people to interact with these devices and interact with these spaces in a touch-free environment. So to wrap up, the key thing here 
is understanding flexibility and understanding the dynamism that we're, we're going to need to address with our technology. So I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. I hope it's given you some insights into what we're doing, both from a technology perspective, but also in, within Cisco as we go down this hybrid work path. Thank you very much and uh, enjoy your day.